we now begin a section on viruses. I will be talking about the papillomavirus, the cold virus, and then influenza virus. I will have my own section on COVID-19. That will be in its own lecture. First, papillomaviruses. About, there are about 100 types of human papillomavirus. Papillomaviruses have a double-stranded circular DNA genome of about 8,000 base pairs. It's not enveloped and it has an icosahedral capsid. You can see a drawing of a papillomus virus over here. The types of tissue that it binds to are specific, either the skin or the, the mucosa. Replication is determined by the host cell differentiation state. In other words, the virus will go through replication based upon where the host cell is and it comes out and starts replicating at certain times. The reason papillomaviruses are very important is because they've been found as a cause of cervical cancer. And this is associated with a few types of HPV, mostly HPV 16 and 18. HPV may be the world's most prevalent sexually transmitted disease and it's estimated there's 20 million people infected with it in the United States. HPV is present in 99.7% of all cervical cancers. It is the cause of cervical cancer in most cases. Cervical cancer is important because it's the second leading cause of cancer death for women in the United States. HPV can also cause penile, anal, head, and neck cancers in men, so it also infects those mucosa. A patent smear test is used to diagnose aberrant cells and there is a vaccine available to prevent this illness. Growth of the virus inside cells can eventually lead to integration into host DNA. And you can see infectious virus particles will come in. They'll infect the basement layer of the dermis and the mucosa. HPV then integrates into the genome of its host. This is shown here down at the bottom. You see this integration. It's first an episome. It will replicate. It will eventually integrate into the host. Integration of HPV causes a loss of negative feedback control of oncogenes, and E6 and E7 have activities that encourage this. This causes cells to bust out of their, or bust out of the limits on their replication cycle and sets the stage for transformation into a cancer. A vaccine was developed against HPV and the CDC began recommending the HPV vaccine for young women in 2006. It has since been expanded to young men. This graph shows the important effect it has been having on the decrease in incidence of the disease. Note the significant decrease in incidence in 14 to 19 year olds and the 20 to 24 year old group, modus, right, comparing 2003 and 2006 to 2009 and 2012 when the vaccine was then being recommended, you see these significant decreases in the vaccinated groups. And these older age groups did not have access to the HP vaccine. And you can see that there is a big drop, especially in 14 to 19 year olds. The vaccine is effective and it's absolutely worth doing. Okay, rhinoviruses. The rhinovirus is one of the most successful pathogens of humans. It causes infections of the nose and is the most frequent cause of what we call the common cold. There are an estimated 1 billion colds a year worldwide, and that means about 20 or 18 to 20% of the population is getting a cold every year. So this is an important disease just by a loss of productivity. The disease course, symptoms begin about two to three days after infection, and you all know what they are, nasal discharge, stuffiness, and headache. These are your body's reaction to the presence of the virus. The symptoms of a cold normally abate in about nine days. Pathogenesis. Rhinoviruses are very simple viruses. They contain a protein capsid that surrounds a positive single-stranded RNA. When the RNA is translated at the virus, it makes a polyprotein, and this is degraded by proteases encoded directly in the protein into capsid proteins, shown here, and the polymerase, which is shown here. 
right? You can see the proteases that degrade it and the polymerases. So it's a very small and simple virus. Its life cycle is pretty straightforward. The majority of rhinoviruses find their host by attaching to the ICAM receptor and entering the endosome. The drop in pH of the endosome causes uncoating of the virus and movement of the single-stranded RNA into the cytoplasm. The intact, positive, single-stranded RNA looks enough like a messenger RNA to fool the ribosome into translating it into the polyprotein precursor. The polyprotein is digested, releasing the replicase and the capsid proteins. As an RNA virus, rhinovirus cannot use normal host machinery for its replication, so the virus has to code for its own replicase. The protein that performs viral rep RNA replication are transported to the surface of the membrane vesicles where the process takes place. Interestingly, replication begins with the viral priming protein, VPG, that is covalently attached to the end of the RNA genome. Replication proteins copy the positive single-stranded RNA and make a negative single-stranded RNA strand. The negative strand is then replicated to form further positive strands. Some of these lose their attached VPG and migrate back to the ribosome to serve as templates for translation. After several rounds of amplification and production of all the capsid proteins, the positive single-strand RNA that still retains its VPG assembles with other structural pro proteins to form progeny virus. Progeny virus is then released by lysis of the cell. Diagnosis of colds is usually done by observation of symptoms, with very few people seeking medical attention. At the present time, only symptomatic treatment is available using over-the-counter medications for uncomplicated cases of the common cold. Due to the large amount of basic research being done, scientists know more about the rhinovirus than almost any other virus. This knowledge base is beginning to bear fruit with a possible introduction of the first effective antiviral drugs against the common cold. The successful development of a vaccine to prevent the column cold is highly unlikely due to the number of viruses that can cause cold symptoms. There are over 110 different rhinovirus types alone and several other virus families that have been implicated in upper respiratory tract infections as well. The RNA genome of the rhinovirus also mutates rapidly, creating new variants that then circumvent any immunity that may have been built up. Many people extol the virtues of taking large doses of vitamin C to help prevent or shorten the duration of a cold. Extensive, large-scale controlled studies of adults and children have been carried out to test this hypothesis. To date, no evidence has been presented to show that vitamin C has any benefit in preventing or shortening the duration of a cold or in relieving cold symptoms. It appears the benefit that many people feel from taking these remedies has more to do with their minds believing that they work than any curative effect. So therefore, if you just watched this and heard what I just said and believe it, now vitamin C is not going to work for you at all. You're welcome. Finally, in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about influenza A virus. The genome of the virus is composed of eight negative single-strand RNAs. These negative strands cannot be translated into protein in contrast to the RNA from the cold virus. Each segment is being complementary to one messenger RNA. Six of the eight mRNAs code for single proteins, while the remaining two code for two proteins by differential splicing of the RNA. Each mRNA segment is associated with multiple copies of the nucleocapsid protein, NP, and an RNA polymerase made from the viral proteins PB1, PB2, and PA. Here are actually those, again, segments just to emphasize what they're doing. PB1, PA, and PB2 make the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase that it depends on. Uh, then there's an HA hemagglutinin. There's a nucleocapsid segment. There's a neuraminidase. There's an M1 matrix protein, an ion channel, and then NS1 and NS2. Okay, influenza A virus replication. 
The HA on the outer membrane of the virus binds to any one of the numerous sialic acid containing proteins or lipids on the membrane of the cell. Many cells have these sialic rece acid receptors. You can find them in birds, you can find them in pigs, you can find them in all sorts of other mammals. So there are flu viruses that infect all these different organisms. The virus is taken up by receptor-mediated endocytosis. A pH drop inside the endosome causes a conformational change in the HA protein, which then fuses with the endosome membrane. This results in the release of the genome segments into the cell. Influenza virus has two problems to overcome if it is to replicate. First, the genomic RNAs of the virus are not mRNAs and cannot be translated by the ribosome. Remember, they're the negative or template strand. Each influence virus must therefore first create a complementary mRNA strand before the protein can be synthesized. The whole cell lacks a protein capable of doing this, so the virus needs a replicase activity to be present before expression of its own genome. That is why each copy or each segment of the virus has its own replicase attached. Influenza solves this by carrying its own replicase with each virion segment. Immediately after entering the nucleus of the cell, the replicase goes to work making copies of the RNA to create mRNAs. You may think it makes sense that a DNA virus replicates in the nucleus since it uses host proteins to do its replication. The influenza virus also replicates in the nucleus. Why? Why does an R this RNA virus do this? It is in response to a second problem. The copy positive st RNA strand needs to look like messenger RNA. They need five prime, prime caps and polyadenylated tails. These five prime caps are readily available in the nucleus and the replicase snatches caps from the cellular mRNA during synthesis of the positive strand. Polyadenylation is added by the replicase after copying the strand. The finished viral positive RNA now strand now looks like an mRNA to the cell and is dutifully translated after transport to the ribosome. It's pretty clever of the virus. Viral membrane proteins have signals similar to those of the host membrane proteins. HA and NA have the appropriate signals and after translation they wind their way through the Golgi apparatus undergoing glycosylation and eventually ending up on the host cell membrane. Proteins involved in the replication of the virus move back to the nucleus and catalyze the synthesis of full-length strand, positive strand mRNAs and then negative strand viral RNAs. The viral nucleocapsids converge in areas of the cytoplasm adjacent to regions of the membrane where HANA and M2 are accumulating. Assembly of the viral particle is complete when the membrane containing HANA and M2 together with the eight viral RNAs bud from the cell. Let's talk a little, about, a little bit about influenza A viral disease. This is transmitted by airborne droplets. It establishes a local upper, upper respiratory tract infection. It then damages the ciliated epithelium of the upper respiratory tract and in serious cases may spread to the lower respiratory tract. You get classic flu-like symptoms, fever, malaise, headache, and body aches. Systemic systems are caused by interferon and the cytokine response to infection. Major complications include secondary bacterial infections, especially S. pneumoniae, which can be in very dangerous. Antibodies generated are protective to specific antigenic type of the virus, but not to other antigenic types, and this is why you can continue to get the flu. Also, people tend to use the term flu more generally. A lot of the time, if anyone has stomach upset where they throw up or they feel awful and they know it's not the cold, it'll call it a flu. A lot of the time, it's not. If you don't have a high fever and you don't have aches and chills, it's probably not influenza A. Influenza A treatment and control. Antivirals can work if given soon after infection, but they don't generally prevent immunopathology. In other words, you still feel sick and you'll normally develop an immune response to the disease. Amantadine and rimantadine inhibit uncoating of the virus, but resistance to these drugs is increasing. Xanamivir and ostelamivir 
inhibit the neuraminidase and prevent the virus from budding from the cells. The annual vaccine is effective and it is a mixture of HA and NA from several different strains. It's prepared in eggs and then chemically inactivated and injected. There's also newer live vaccines. Some of them occur as nasal sprays. These vaccines are normally the best guess of what they think are the strains are going to be circulating the next year or fall and winter. You get the vaccine in the early fall and hopefully they guessed right and the strains that are circulating are the ones that the vaccine immunizes you against. Sometimes they miss, but a lot of the time it's effective and everyone is encouraged to get the flu vaccine. Influenza viruses change in two possible ways to escape the immune resistance of their hosts. In antigenic drift, shown at the top, the viral replicase makes a mistake causing a change in the protein products. If these are changes are significant enough, they can escape immune detection and spread through a population. So it's a small change in one of the segments, let's say to the hemagglutinin, and it's not as well recognized by the immune system. So then you can get sick again, but you don't get as sick because you still have some partial immunity to it. However, if two genetically different influenza viruses happen to infect the same cell, which can happen, then both sets of viral genomes replicate in the nucleus and are transported to the membrane. Upon packaging, there is extensive mixing of the viral RNAs, which causes the creation of potentially novel flu strains. What's even worse is if you have the mixing of viruses that can infect a human and a bird and a pig all mixed together. Pigs are particularly bad this way because they can be infected by avian strains, human strains, and pig strains. With the right combination, these jumbled viruses can dramatically alter their antigenic properties, making them capable of infecting large numbers of hosts. If the strain is especially virulent, it can cause worldwide pandemics and can kill millions of people. The H1N1 pandemic of 2008 and 2009 was caused by such a strain. There was extensive mixing between an avian strain, a pig strain, and a human strain to form a new virus. This is called antigenic shift. Thankfully, uh, when it began replication, it attenuated significantly and started causing less serious disease. While it could still spread extensively through the human population, it was not uniquely lethal. Okay, two questions for group discussion. Why can HPV cause cancer, yet rhinovirus cannot? The reason here is, is that rhinovirus is an RNA virus and does not insert in the genome. The HPV virus is a DNA virus that inserts in the genome and then alters the cell cycle and takes off some of the regulation of the cell cycle and then causes the, can the cells to become cancerous. A major avian strain has been discovered that can be transmitted occasionally to humans if a chicken bites a human. How could you interrupt this transmission cycle? For example, uh, their chickens will come in contact with humans at these large markets in various countries, live chickens, and they can spread the virus that way. If you start to see transmission of this flu, the flu virus from the chicken to humans, and these are very deadly viruses, how can you stop it? Okay, this is not just a hypothetical question. An avian strain of influenza emerged in Hong Kong, H5N1, in 1997, resulting in 18 cases with a 50% mortality rate. Before this virus could make a successful jump to human, the human population, it was eliminated through the destruction of over 100,000 poultry. Further outbreaks of this strain occurred in December 2003 through to December 2004 among poultry in Cambodia, China, Indonesia, Japan, Laos, South Korea, Thailand, and Vietnam. During this outbreak, a total of 23 cases of influenza A virus infected humans, resulting in 18 deaths. It was especially lethal. This is virus is a continuing concern, but because of the aggressive action of these countries, it has never successfully made the jump to humans. Okay, that's it for viruses.